this. They don't think we can keep making hits about cameras. Uncle She, Silver Fox, tanking the stocks. Uncle She, Silver Fox, tanking the stocks. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They call me the CCP, all my kids wanna win the spelling bee Little did they know, I just want them to be So here Uncle She snapped his fingers, unlike any ringers, all the stocks went to the shitters I am... Inevitable Oh guess what, it's not even suited for some puts cause the value actually worth more than the books You ask me for the future of the EDU stocks, I just say it's gonna be higher than the current blocks Oh big cocks, Uncle She, Silver Fox, tanking the stocks Oh no, investors, I don't feel so good. Uncle She, Silver Fox, tanking the stocks. Uncle She, Silver Fox, tanking the stocks. Guys, this is Dudurjans here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that little rap I made for, you know, literally the summary of all the educational stock basket that, you know, originated in China and then they all went IPO in the United States. So as I said before, when you trade anything, you know, any stock that I have, you know, any remote relationship with the Chinese or with, you know, operations in Asia or in China in particular, you're not really trading stocks anymore, trading the business earnings. You're literally trading, what do you call that? You're trading politics, right? So as how the Chinese, you know, tech stock crackdown, you know, the, the US media call it the tech stock crackdown, but really it's more like an internal capital capital market crackdown per se. Due to the, the rapid deregulation happening in the past two or three years in China, um, there are some interesting movement or development going on in terms of the capital market. And as, you know, as Uncle Xi is trying to control more and more capital within the country without it flowing out of the country, um, due to a lot of political reasons, you know, people fear due to this policy change, people fear that their uh, their their assets in Asia or in the, the CCP um, in general is not going to be safe. Therefore, you have a lot of capital fly out of China. This is why um, Uncle Xi sort of exacerbated um, the speed of tech crackdown, which basically is squashing down the intrinsic asset value of all these tech stocks and trying to sort of using government money to buy more and more shares of all these, you know, um, people owned or civilian owned tech stock and then sort of trying to control it using a strong arm method, right? And what is what the effect of the effect, the cause and effect of that, or that the aftermath of that is resulted, you know, the, the ETS CQQQ going down for the past six months, literally, because, you know, when, because the, the, the US capital market want to see a more um, democratic Asian um, tech industry, right? They want to see more of the, of the democracy going on in Asia. But with all of these tech crackdowns, um, when government started owning more and more of these stocks, um, there's not going to be a sort of democratic um, process going on when, let's just say, CCP owns, let's just say, 20% of the company, which in this case, you know, for Alibaba, more and more of these ownership got squashed down by the CCP government and more and more of these you know, <clears throat> these shares will be belong to the government by the end of this year. This is why, for those who are interested, um, Alibaba actually went down. And a lot of people fear that if the, uh, if the government uh, owns more and more of, of these, you know, tax shares, um, eventually this is going to become a sort of like a, a liability for the shareholders, which it might or it might not. Because, you know, Uncle Xi, as capricious as he is, when it's, it's like, it's like, it's, it's like an early warning sign. Or it's, it's like, you know, Trump and him are like, you know, have similar personalities. They like to strong arm a lot of, you know, investors and, and merchants and just the finance individuals or finance industry in general. Therefore, um, you will see that by them doing po political changes, 
um, they can benefit from using you know other companies to buy into those companies and later on boost up the share value shareholder value again and again the entire international capital market and the private equity market isn't doing so well right because you know we all fear that the US is going to increase its interest rate as early as by the end of 2021 or early as that the earliest day that you can get which is January 2022 and we we won't have any confirmation until you know this Wednesday when Powell come out speak in an FOMC meeting and maybe later in September where he comes out and talks about the you know general general monetary and fiscal policy for the United States but go back to you know this video we were going to talk about the the edu stock basket right and you see a lot of fluctuation in the past five days in the past month and when we enter for you know edu we actually made money when we enter around two dollars and we go up to like two point you know three dollars or whatever right and we entered on um, there's another stock called GDOTU. <clears throat> Which in this video, I was going to tell you guys that, you know, a lot of these, you know, the asset value of these, these stocks are actually way higher than its market value. And you can see I started writing out all of these things, you know, GOTU decided to cut their employees by 30%. And that will save 30% of operational costs and I have a lot of other analysis I was going to post on Patreon. But, uh, you know, due to a lot of these, you know, controversy for the past few days about, you know, um, our tweet and everything, I decided not to go on like super in-depth in this. Basically, what I decided to do is I was going to put a lot of in-depth, you know, analysis on this video. But now I decided to take them out and put a lot of more of the in-depth video into Patreon instead of actually put it out in a public domain. This is sort of like a punishment for those of you who are just on... Um, you know, speaking shit about us and and talk, uh, you know, hate on us on Twitter. So you know, a lot of a lot of the messages you are actually entitled, uh, we're gonna put on public. We are not gonna put on on public anymore. <clears throat> and a lot of those are gonna be very, um, you know, <clears throat> important for all of you guys who are like fundamental understanding of how fundamentals will play out in a lot of these um prices price movement in the future, right? And then another thing is we're gonna talk a little bit about the uh, the. <clears throat> TEDU. So for those of you who don't know what TEDU is, TEDU is another um, stock that we made some money in the past month, a past few, past few, you know, weeks and months when it increased by fifty percent on one particular day, um, which is like on here, right? One is that one one point two five we bought in and it went up like by fifty percent or what whatsoever, right? And then we have to talk about the reason why we entered and the reason why we re-entered right after we sold out a, a, a major you know proportion of our shares um after fifty percent you know increase and we we anticipated that it's gonna go down back to one point two five and we 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 plan to use some of our uh, newly free dry powder to sort of buy into more of that because earlier this year um TED, uh, TEDU actually have a privatization statement, which is not covered by Robinhood, by the way. And for those of you who, who only get your financial news from, from Robinhood or Robinhood Snack, you won't get a lot of those AD, ADS news on Robinhood because uh, they're not really covered. And a lot of, uh, <clears throat> and a lot of uh, other things, uh, you know, other news about TEDU are not covered in the mainstream media. So basically what happens is, is TEDU decided to enter into a privatization agreement with, you know, <clears throat> another Chinese company. And the Chinese company agreed to pay for the shareholder $4 per share to, so, to, to take TEDU um, off the NASDAQ listing. So for those of you who have, so for any of you like me who owns TEDU, any price lower than $2.7, you guys, we are going to get paid if the privatization agreement um, goes through. So that means by the end of Q3, we'll have a definitive sort of uh, a timeline of when this company will be taken private. And by that date, it's already too late for you guys to buy into this opportunity. Basically, this is a gamble. Okay, so let's just say it actually got taken private by the end of September. Then that means if we bought in right now, uh, uh, not not EDU, it's TEDU. Where did TEDU go? 
So if we bought in right now $1.25, let's take out our calculator out. For every share you buy right now, minus all of the filing fees, so uh, we suspect that filing fee was gonna dra drag down the $3, uh, the $4 payment to, to $3.8, right, or $3.7. So let's just do the worst case scenario, it's $3.5. So any three point, so by the time, by the end of September, 3.5 minus 1.25, let's just say our cost basis is this. That means every share you 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 own for for TEDU and it actually got taken private, you'll make two point two five dollar per share. So let's just say for for right for us, we have five hundred shares right now, and we plan to add a little more. And um, we made we made about a thousand one hundred and twenty five on just this deal alone. So this is a gamble, right? We're gambling on you know whether this company is going to take them private or not. If it get taken private, then hey, it's big payday for us. And 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 if you if you go look at the fundamentals of of TED, you will realize that a they're selling their real estate asset, and and those are going to be free cash flow for them. So that in this interim transition period of time, they will have cash flow for the next twelve months. Okay, for at least the next twelve months. So if you just trade under the cash flow alone, you will see that this stock. This stock worth at least two dollars right now on the market, and right now it's at one point two seven dollars. Okay, and then this is a gamble because we're gambling on the the success of the privatization agreement, and you will know definitively by the end of Q three. <clears throat> I mean, again, right? Everything is related to tech crackdown, or you know, if you have any affiliation with you know CCP or. And you, you're doing any business in the CCP, your stock price can get hit. So right now we're gonna we're also gonna talk about um, AEI, the one that we bought in around two point two two dollars, and I said there you have a nine percent upside from the two point two two dollars, and I started adding more position when it when it go down to like one point eight four, or today it went back down to the one point eight mark, and at one point eight you see a strong resistance. Why? Because for AEI you have let's just see AEI is outstanding share, right? So AEI have an outstanding share of 33, uh, 33 million. This is already added. The, 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 you know, this we already added the 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 new issuance. You know, around July, uh, on, around late July, where you know we have a drastic decrease in the stock price. And if you look at the operation chart of AEI, you will see this principle. Like you know, a lot of companies that AEI is the holding company. You have a lot of subsidiaries that operates in, in in Singapore, in in Hong Kong, and and and, and what whatnot, right? In Asia, and you have like the Texas one, which is doing you know the 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 AEI and and Tesla partnership. So that partnership actually will worth a lot of money in the next two to five years. So right now, if this cost only worth $1.8, and for the past few months, it actually went went up to $5 and it went down back to, you know, the $2 mark, that means you will see the price range is already defined. That means in the, in the next three to five years, or in the next 1.5 years, if the economy is going, you know, on the, uh, if the economy is going on a, like, a really good, um, winning streak instead of you know the the interest rate actually go up. That means AEI is gonna go up back to the three dollar mark. When it go back to the three dollar mark, for those of you who enter around two point two two dollars, you break even and you make a dollar, right? And for 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 me who decided to hold this for a little bit of more more than you know one year or a little bit more than a, a few months. Uh, because I want to really look at the future of the real estate market in the United States. Because you have to understand that this company does home installment, and and this company does a lot of stuff that related to real estate. And due to the fact that it has subsidiaries in Hong Kong, and Hong Kong is considered a part of the CCP, therefore in the past two in the past two months, its stock price got hit. That's normal. That's just normal right now. Everything it's like you know stop Asian hate in America. Every every Chinese related stock are getting hit um, in the U.S. market, anyways, right? I mean, I'm sorry for for making this video a bit long. I just want you guys to understand the logic of about about like a, a, a lot of these stock plays. Those are gambles, right? Those are gambles because you you're literally engaged in a very high risk, high reward sort of situation. We are sort of betting on the 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 political. That the policy change in the next few months or in the next few years, and we're we're sort of um betting on private privatization uh, agreement. We're betting on you know we're looking at fundamentals of these stocks. These asset value or are should be trade traded uh, higher than what they are uh, what what their market value right now.
right? <clears throat> Sorry, um, my brain is a little bit scrambled, and uh, and I think this is it for this video. If you guys like this kind of content, smash a like button, right? We don't even want to ask for a sub anymore because we're just putting putting out on um, truthful and f and factual content. And in the next few days, we're gonna push out some you know real analysis on fundamentals on MMAT for those of you who are just here for the MMAT content. All right, see you guys on the other side. Oh, just a very quick thing for TEDU. You, you see, like big short people like like Citadel, right? Like say that they're already exited all of their positions because they realize that right now it's like, it, it's it's literally, it's it's really literally at the, the bottom of, of, um, of basically the principal, the principal, how do you say this? It's literally at the bottom of the principal option price. So there's no way of them or there's no need for them to short it anymore because the maximum profit they will have, they will have about 1.25 per share. This is why, this is why, you know, I, I, you know, later on in the meta video, I'm going to talk about by the time when meta reaches what, $1.5 or $1.75, if worst case comes to worse, then a lot of these shorts is going to just cover or exit because there's no way, there's no, literally, no use for them to keep shorting anymore. And you see a lot of those Oasis management, all of those like people who like to pick up all these, you know, very, very cheap stuff, they come in. Because everybody right now just like, oh, we're betting on the success of the privatization um, agreement. And you know, BlackRock is just, you know, only have this much of left anymore, you see? Like they don't even have that much left anymore. And, and by the end, by the end of like, you know, by the end of, uh, by the end of the, the, by the time the next 13F come out, we, we, we will even see a more interesting position come out. And again, 13Fs are filed 45 days after um, the ending of a quarter. So yeah. And also what is interesting is we, we might not even see if we see, if the privatization agreement actually went through and everything's finalized, we might not even see another 13F. And, uh, next quarter because you know by the end of of q3 is literally around september 30th and then they can file the, their searching at 40 days at 45 days after september 30th so everything you see is delayed okay and we can only form our speculation and form how we are going to invest by a lot of delayed filings this is why sec is trying to change the searching at filing cycle but uh, they might see a lot, a lot of difficulty within that, you know, that that thing because um, it actually takes a lot of efforts to file those kind of stuff. But anyways, um, we, we I just have to put this in there um, for those of you who want to form your own DD and and you know do your own perspective or or you know uh, I mean again we're not financial advisors therefore we do not get financial advices and everything we say on this channel is for shits and giggles. Be sure to invest at your own risk. Thank you.